Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing the last leg lock to be invented in judo. So we're going to be going back to the 1920s. The 1920s have their ups and downs regarding the judo technical development. A lot has been invented, not only uh, in terms of techniques, but also setups and sweeps. But uh, it's also been devastating when it comes to the rule set, because uh, in that decade, the last hammer on the coffin of leg locks and also neck cranks have been uh, put down. So uh, by 1925, we all know that all leg locks and uh, spine locks have been banned. Now, personally, spine locks, I'm not a big fan and I would not fight for them. However, leg locks are something interesting. So it first started with Ashi Garami in 1916 and from there, it went on to ban all the other leg locks because Ashigarami not only targets the knee, but it's a form of an incredibly powerful uh, torsion. So today we're going to be looking again at Shin Shiki Judo by Kanemitsu Sensei, published 1926. So never mind the photo on the right because Japanese books go from right to left. So we're going to be looking at the last paragraph of this of the left page. So uh, we're going to see that it only offers one photo of the knee bar. However, it offers three entries and the first entry is from above. So um, you are someone who's trying to pass guard. You are between the UK's legs and then from there you grab the ankle of the foot and then you rotate around it and you go down and deep much like you see in the photo and then you go to your side and this is where you apply it by extending your hips much like a juji gatame the next one is when you're at the bottom now from what i understood it's a very brief uh, explanation but you're at the bottom you grab the ankle of the leg that you want to attack and then from what i understood is you invert and rotate and then you get your hips on the knees and you go to your side and from there you apply the same uh, lock and uh, as you can see here this is uh, Kanemitsu himself performing the knee bar and um, you can see the OK is called Sato and you can see that this was invented uh, for a particular reason and I'll get, and I'll get to it um, at the end. Now the last one is an interesting one so you are from the back, so you have three positions. The first one is you're on top, the second is at your at the bottom, and the next one is when you take the back. So it says that start as if you are trying to do okuri eri jime, and then you slide your arms uh, underneath their armpits, and from there you rotate them to their front. So uh, we have this position often when we take someone's back is that they go on their face and uh, chest down and this is where you can actually start to apply it what you do is is you sit and apply pressure on their hips and from there you lift both legs up and you make sure to stretch it and then from there you rotate around the leg and you apply the lock so you get them first uh, face down sit on their stomach and then lift both legs up and then you go in between the legs and you wrap yourself around whichever leg that you want to target. So um, this is what I really don't like about all books is that they have very limited pictures or uh, uh, illustrations. And I understand that because of not only prints were very rare back then, but also photography. But it's nice to see that they have thought of many entries for it and uh, it's not only just one photo and it shows a very primitive way of applying the technique like the old books of 1906 and 1905 where they barely show uh, the foot sweep and they don't tell you about the weight transference and the weight uh, or how you apply the weight to the other leg so you can sweep the leg where there's no weight on it etc very little written but here i'm very glad that there is three positions that's uh, discussing the entry for the knee bar and uh, it's a great book so now why was this invented and towards the end so the 1920s i would say around 1921 
when this was happening. This is according to Kindai uh, Judo or the old magazines uh, that uh, discuss these events between the schools that they were fighting. So uh, this is Kosen Judo, like I said. So you have a team against team, a school against a school. And Kanemitsu was looking to dethrone Oda's team. And since Ashigarami has been, of course, uh, banned, that's when they had to get a bit creative and target the knee in a different way. So Kanemitsu uh, worked on this uh, Ashi Hiza Juji Gatame. This is what it's called in the book. And of course, when it first happened, a lot of people were outraged. And this is like Ashi Garami, you're putting the knee in jeopardy. And after a long discussion uh, by the referees, they decided that uh, it's legal, and the head referee was none other than Hajime Isogai, who was also a Neiwaza master and also was able to put uh, Tanabe in his place. He had arguably one of the greatest trilogies uh, in judo or greatest rivalry in judo slash jujitsu history. And I'll make a separate video for this trilogy and... Um, it's really nice of Hajime to actually allow it because he himself loved Neiwaza and also um, it gave way to creativity on that day and um, it was really nice. But like I said, by 1925, it was all gone and uh, a lot of judo is what we see today was decided uh, in that decade. So a hundred years ago, or well, over a hundred years ago, they were coming up with these entries for these uh, submissions and uh, it's really great that they're documented now uh, granted it's in old Japanese so even it's a bit complicated for uh, uh, today's Japanese people but nonetheless you can still understand what they're trying to say so this is an interesting uh, story I have uh, talked about it years ago and uh, now my audience is a lot bigger and I figured it's nice to revisit it with the book and make it as simple as possible and also with the details of how to enter it. Back then I just talked about the story, um, but now uh, it's nice to see what the books actually say and how to access uh, these uh, submissions. So if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content. Uh, and it would mean a lot to me, your support, to keep this content growing and evolving. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.